Okay. Okay, great. Electra is hearing me clearly. So let's see. We've got a couple of minutes still. I'm going to go ahead and uh, until exactly seven o'clock if anyone wants to log in. But if there's anybody watching who has some um, questions from last week uh, that you'd like to ask before we start, please go ahead and do that. Um, I'm, I'm going to be addressing more. We've got a lot. Uh, a lot to cover, but uh, there we have as many sessions as we need. There are many, many Tuesdays coming up in the in the year, so we have plenty of time to address everything we need. So, if you have any questions from last session, don't hesitate to ask them. Okay. Oh, excuse me. I did go and get my second COVID shot today, so I'm covered. And uh, in two weeks, uh, in another couple of weeks, my sister, who is also my roommate, will get her. Yes, this is live now. I'm going to cut this part off before we, after it gets processed. So, yes, Miranda, this is live. Is Miracle with us? Anyway, it is time. So let's go ahead and get started. So. Hey everybody, Jacqueline here, and welcome to session two of the new writers, meaning new you beginning writers workshop, session two. Last week, I kind of introduced myself and we talked about the five important W's of writing. So I'm just gonna remind you real quick, that's who, where, what, why, and when. Always ask yourself different types of books that you can write. We talked about writing essays. We talked about writing reviews for an employee. We talked about writing promotional activities. We talked about getting inside your story and how you're going to get inside your story, whatever that story is. Today, because we're still talking about the who of that who, where, why, what, and when, we're going to also talk about the difference between showing and telling, okay? When you're talking about a who and you want to describe who you're talking about, whether, whether it be that you're writing an essay about Shakespeare's um, Taming of the Shrew, maybe a play that you saw of, of, that, of that play, an, an acting of that play that you saw, or perhaps you're writing an essay about a, a book that you read for a class, um, or you're wanting to write the story that's in your head. You have to be able to tell who the who is. Um, and when you're telling who the who is, it's not enough to just say an old guy. I'm going to put a picture in your head. And I hope that you will forgive me for my lack of drawing abilities. I do consider myself an artist, but I definitely don't consider myself a, 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 a painter. <laughs> but I'm going to draw a picture for you. And I want you to think about, okay, here's, here's a, this is a, this is a house. Yeah. Okay. And this is the sidewalk in front of the house. That's the sidewalk in front of the house. And this is um, a, young, a young kid, maybe let's say an eight-year-old. Looks like he's headed to this house. So there are two ways to tell what you're seeing in this story. Someone who doesn't see, doesn't have much of an imagination or just sees the world in, in two dimensions will say, there's a kid walking towards a house. But if you're telling a story, there is a, there is a young kid that looks like he's a hundred years old with his head tilted down as if something 
something is trying to drag him back away from that. Yet he keeps taking those steps forward. Every step, with every step, he feels. He feels it from the heel of his toe to the, from the, it's like there's something pulling him away. He's walking forward. And he keeps stepping forward. And the closer he gets to the house, the bigger the house seems to him. And the house seems to grow eyes. I can't draw. The house seems to grow eyes. And maybe it's got, oh, when he looks up at the house, it looks like there's jagged teeth in that door. Um, maybe the windows, the windows over here look like angry red cheeks. But he just keeps walking forward to the house. He keeps going and he keeps going. There's something keeping him away from that house, but something dragging him towards that house. Okay, I showed you a story. I showed you a story. I didn't tell you the story because I didn't tell you what he's running from or what's at that house, why he feels like so compelled that he has to go to that house. Sometimes the key to showing the key to showing a story rather than telling a story is to leave out some of the story. How can I tell this story without telling every detail of the story? But yet, including other details like the kid's, uh, you know, jet black hair was matted down to his head as if it had been drenched. That his shirt hung off of him as if it were six sizes too big. His shoes felt like they were filled with lead. So I'm telling you the story. I'm showing you the story, but I'm not telling. I'm not telling you who the kid is. Maybe later in the story I will, but I'm not telling you who lives in that house. He's got to go to that house. I'm not telling you what else is in this picture. I'm just showing you this screen, this screen of this picture. So that's the difference between showing showing a story and telling a story. When you're telling a story, I might say to this picture, this kid on the way to grandma's house, his mama said, don't you stop and play in that creek. And he did it anyway. And now he's on the way. He's almost to grandma's house. And he's late. First of all, he's late. And when he gets there, he's going to be soaking wet. And grandma's going to be mad. And in his mind, this is how mad grandma's going to be. There's, there's the story. There's the story. How can you tell your story? How can you tell, for example, Moretta, when you're talking about your spa, which is beautiful, by the way. I love the pictures that you posted on Facebook this week. When you're talking about your spa, what can you tell? What can you show me verbally about your spa that will let me know the enticement that it is? And if you think about it, the, the who of your spa, think of your spa as a personality. This spa is, is this, this place is a haven. This haste, this place exudes peace and comfort. You have to use your action words. Calming. This place is, yes. Stepping in, stepping from in the door of this place, you will be immediately overcome with a sense of calm. You don't tell them why. You don't tell them that the very images that they're going to see in front of them, the purple wall of flowers and the, the beautiful uh, decor, you don't tell them that they're going to have to feel calm because you've got purple. No, you tell them. And it, you fill in, you walk into that door, you are going to feel the calming effects of the atmosphere around you. 
think about how you're showing your character. Oh, that's a good one. Stepping into a room full of peace. That's excellent, Maria. Excellent. Okay. Miracle, are you here too today? And if Miracle is here, I want to know if you thought about your who, your teacher named Miss Lucy. Who is Miss Lucy? What, did, what is the image that I have of Miss Lucy before I ever see a picture? Okay. And before you ever describe her to me, what is, what is going to be my image of Miss Lucy? Is my image of Miss Lucy going to be that she's a little bit scatterbrained right off the top? Is my image of Miss Lucy going to be that she's strict? Is it going to be that she's fun? Um, what is my image of Miss Lucy going to be as one of these 13 crazy students the second she walked in that door for the very first time? The very first time, the very first day of the semester, you walk in that door and you get an opinion of what that teacher is going to be like. What is Miss Lucy like? And that opinion might be wrong. It's okay for that beginning opinion to be wrong. As your job throughout the book is going to be to clarify, clarify. She's unlucky and always late. That tells a lot. How do you know she's unlucky? How do you know she's unlucky? Birds pick out her hair a lot. That's a good. So when you walk in the door and you see her for the first time, there stood the teacher with her hair that looked like a bird's nest. It looked like birds had been pulling out her pulling out her hair constantly. Her clothes were disheveled, and it certainly looked like there were bird feathers on her shoulders. You know, she her her lipstick was maybe crooked, where maybe she'd been trying to fix it. Where birds while birds were attacking her, you know, it looks like a hope. Yeah, you got to have you got to have a description. And that's a good description. Keep those things in mind. Okay. When you are writing, one of the, when we, one of the things that we talked about is writing a performance preview, review. When you're writing a performance review, we know exactly who that person is about because it's, it's their performance review. But even then, we want to say she, she exudes professionalism to her customers. What what is the the feeling that you that she gets? You want to put that out there, or she exudes her nervousness. You know, her unfortunately, clients can tell that she's nervous, but she's getting better at it. There's no reason to be unkind, but there's every reason to be truthful. Okay, okay. So when we're talking about the who. And we're talking about showing the story instead of telling the story. We're talking about the characteristics, the physical and uh, aura, the, the physical look and the aura of that person when we're talking about the who. What, is their, what aura that you sense from that person? And you all know what I mean. You know that when you walk into a room for the first time and there's somebody who's supposed to be teaching the class or somebody who's giving a talk or a seminar or something, you know, um, you know, sorry, I'm trying to cancel it. It'll go away. In a minute. Um, you know, immediately what sense you get from that person. How is the reader of what you're writing going to get that sense? Are they going to get the sense from you by saying that she wore a gray skirt and black pants and, and and shoes with laces that's true that's a true description and maybe to some people that's enough but is that enough for you to know anything about that character no you don't know if there are bird feathers on her shoulders or if her hair looks like uh, there are feathers in it and uh, birds have been picking at it and it is big words and i am sorry miracle you know what? We're, we will talk more specifically about your book and your character, just you and I, um, because words can be confusing. 
but words are beautiful too. I want to tell you something. Um, I want you to imagine a big sister reading to her younger sisters at night, every night. Uh, when I when I was young, before I moved out of my parents' home, at night I would read to my younger sisters. I have three younger sisters, and they're five, seven, and eight years younger than me. And on the nights that I would read to them, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna gladly admit, no, it wasn't every night, but I did it fairly. Well. You know what we read? We enjoyed it terribly. We read the dictionary. We read the dictionary. And to this day, there are words. I'm going to challenge you, everybody. If you feel you're bored, you want to read something different, you want to experience something different, get out that big old fat dictionary that's sitting, you know, on your bookshelf that your great great grandma gave you for graduation or whatever. Get that dictionary and just open it randomly. Read some words. And then make a little tick mark beside everyone you've read so next time you won't open that word. If you open it to the same page, you won't read the same word. Read that word and try to make up a story about that word. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a word. Word, I'm going to tell it to you. I'm going to, I'm going to write it down. I, I read the news, Electra read the newspaper to her dad. That's a great I mean, these are great learning experiences, great ways to learn words. So I'm going to, I'm going to write a word for you. And this is the, a word that um, I remember reading to my younger sisters. And we laughed about it so much that I will never forget it. And we made up so many stories about it that I will never forget it. So look it up. Take some time. Look it up. You will find that there are words. They're big words. They're confusing words. Maybe you haven't heard them before. And even those of us who are older, <laughs> myself, I remember being in a conference um, about 10 years ago and um, a girl leaned over to me and she said, what does conundrum mean? And she was a well-educated woman. It's just a word she'd never heard. And so, you know, we discussed it and we figured out, you know, I mean, I, I knew what it meant, but I, I explained it to her. And she was like, oh, that makes sense. And in that very session, not 20 minutes later, the, the presenter of the session used the word conundrum. Yes, there are big words out there. And I know that you're not in a big word place yet, but that's okay because you will be. And writers use words. Writers learn words. And you you will learn them. So let's talk about, <laughs> right, Electra. That's what it means. Why is it, why do we need another word for it? I don't know. But that's another word for it. Totally silly. But my sisters and I, to this day, make up sentences when we see each other using that silly word. because. You know, oh, we saw the dog micturating. Yeah. Right? Okay. No. But that's what we do. That's what it means. But I read the dictionary to my sisters. And we, it was enjoyable because maybe because I, maybe I'm the only one who enjoyed it as much as, as I think. But we, we enjoyed it because we made up stories. We used those words in stories. So miracle. If you want to learn bigger words and you want to learn words, learn how to make words not be confusing, the way to do that is to study words. Um, word usage is fun. Uh, and I want to show you something that I do. We talked about this last week. We talked about the fact that writers write. Now, and, and we also talked about the fact that I'm not an artist. We just, okay. so I have several uh, I usually have several books that I'm working on at a time, but like I'll finish all the first, second, third drafts of one book or one book series, and then I'll start on something else for a while. And maybe next year I'll go back to that other book series. So as I do that, when I go, when I'm thinking back on that previous book series, I have a book series that um, 
I've written. It's four volumes. No, it's not published yet. Uh, and finished it out. Um, but it's called the Tsarina, which Tsarina is a Slavic word for a princess. And these are just some notes that I've written after I'm no longer even looking at that story about motivation and questions. I'm always thinking about my stories that, that are waiting to be seen. And as far as the story, I, I'm writing a series of stories now. It's all, it'll also be four volumes. Um, and I'm also writing, I've, I, I've drawn myself a little map of this, this story that I'm writing right now is about that it involves a quarry, a granite quarry. And so here's my picture. You may say this notebook's awfully thin, but it's because once I draw these pictures, I tear them out, I scan them into my computer, and I keep them, I keep them in a in a file for each book that I'm that I'm writing or each series that I'm writing. So we're talking about the who. But let's talk about, but let's, let's, let's move on from the who and let's talk about the where. And where you have to know. This picture of mine will probably never see the light of day. Although it would be fun if I could find somebody who can draw well enough when I do publish the book, who can draw this for me. But um, this picture may never see the light of day. But in order for me to write the story and to know, where my who's are, I have to have that image in my head. So, and I have to be able to show that. Can't just say. Uh, you you could just say, in in Cincinnati there is a red house on a street with a lot of trees. You could say that. You could say that. But that red house on a street with a lot of trees. Hmm. Is that going to be, is just that enough to tell, to, to, to bring somebody's imagination to life? And that's okay for a start. That, matter of fact, that's a very good start for a book. Oh, I might have to feel that from myself. In Cincinnati, there's a red house on a street with a lot of trees. And at the end of that street, there's a bus stop. And at that bus stop, there's a woman named Mary who waits every morning for the 605. Oh, I like that. Okay, sorry. Here I go. That's that's in my head. I also have, I wanted to show you this little notebook that I have. I carry this in my purse all the time. I talked about being able to take notes when you overhear conversations or you see images while you're out and about. Um, here we go. I have notes in here, little snippets of conversations I've overheard. This one's only got like five or six pages used up because uh, this is like the third of these that I've used. Up. But I keep this in my notebook, keep it in my purse so that if I see something or hear something. And so, you know what I'm going to write down right here in my in my notebook that I keep in front of my desk all the time. I'm going to keep uh, in Cincinnati. Yeah, because. Yeah. Where our who is? That's right. Where is our who? Is our, where is our who? Is our who a city girl? A city boy? Is our is our who uh where where does the story take place? Do, do I write poetry? Have I written I've written a lot of poetry and published a lot. I've had a lot of published poetry published. Yes, quite a lot. Um I love this. A red house on a tree line street. Okay. I just wrote it down. That's all I need. That'll remind me. Yes, I've written I, I write a lot of poetry. Um and I and I have um quite a bit of poetry as well. Um maybe next week I'll get some of my books out that have stuff published in them. Um anyway. Sometimes we think that a book has to start with the who, but it doesn't. But we have to know who the who is. 
uh, I wrote a book called The Sapphire Legacy. And in The Sapphire Legacy, my main character, my who, doesn't show up to chapter three. But we know she's we know she's coming. We know she's coming. Something's coming. Something's coming. You have to have aware involved tied with your who. So where in that particular book is where she's coming to. Okay. You have to show that as well. She was coming to in in that particular book, she's coming to a small town. Uh, full of people who'd lived there for a hundred years. An old town that had almost died many times. But one man saved it. That's the where. So when you show, the, the difference between showing a story and telling a story isn't just about the who, it's about the where. It's about the what, Okay. What is the purpose of your story? You can't just tell a story that says there were some friends. They went for walks every day in the summer. Okay. That's great. But if they went for walks every day in the summer, it has to be something memorable, something worth telling the story about. And I'm, I'm specifically thinking of the uh, plot for that. It's an old movie. It's called Stand By Me. And um, another old movie, It, that there's a modern version of that's very different, but old movies where kids went for walks and they found something. And the books never start with the kids going for a walk. They start with the where, the tent, the place, the house. You have to be able to have a where and you have to be able to show your where. If you're talking about railroad track, if you're talking about kids walking along a railroad track, how would you describe um, people walking along a railroad track without saying, you know, without saying just that they were walking along a railroad track? You might say something like, it was, it was scary and, and exciting because any minute the train could come around the corner. And they never knew. They never knew. It's not an abandoned railroad. So now we know it's not an abandoned railroad track. We know that it's a it's a it's a still in action railroad track. We could say after, after an hour they stopped and picked blueberries on the side of the road, on the side of the tracks. So we know that it crosses through some country. Okay. Thirty minutes later they came to a little uh, trestle where they walked over a body of water. And that was very scary because what if the train came while they were walking over the water? What would they do? Would they jump? Would they run? Would they get run over? Uh -huh. You don't have to say they just were walking on the railroad track. There's more to it. Than that. Okay. So we know that we have to show our who have to show our where. We have to show our okay, what. What's the purpose of your story? Does your story have a purpose? What? What is the purpose? Um, in, in my book, The Sapphire Legacy, the what is the discovery of this relative that she never knew she had, who made millions of dollars and left it to her. And she had no clue who she was, why he left it to her to cover all of this. And not only, not only what he left, but it, there was a where and where he left it, but what he what he left a description of what he left. I have a scene in that book where, where she goes to a bank to look in a bank a safety deposit box, and in that safety deposit box she finds a necklace in a case with a 
tag on it that says happy 16th birthday and it's to her only she's not 16 she's 21 so why did he give her this necklace for her 16th birthday but never give her this necklace never introduce himself what 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 was his purpose what was his meaning why did he Okay. There we get to the next one. Why? In his particular case, his why was because he was delusional a little bit. He'd, he'd lost touch with. He had a he had a he had a image of a perfect person in his mind, and until he could find that perfect person. Again, that perfect person who he had loved until he found one of her descendants that he could love again. Um, okay. And um, Moretta is telling us that her recipe book is not visual enough. I'm going to talk about something that I didn't talk about before, which is about um, the actuality. I haven't talked about that yet. Um, but I, but I am going to. So that is going to play into your recipe book. So we'll talk about that. Um, but you have to have a why. And you can't just say the reason why is because it was a stupid old man who was delusional about, you know, that there was a, a perfect person. Okay. We can't. Uh, and the when, he was over 100 years old and she was 21. So this story that I wrote was a hundred years long and it bounced back and forth between now and then. So sometimes you have to be able to say 85 years ago, or you have to be able to say, for example, Why and why is an easy one for some in some particular instances? Because, like Moretta is talking about her her recipe book, her her, her cookbook, okay? and the why is easy. The why is easy because it will make you feel better. It will cleanse it, you know cleanse your system, cleanse your body, cleanse your mind, cleanse your soul, cleanse your spirit. Yes, that's easy. In some things, you're going to find that it just falls together. Falls out like it falls out like petals um, being strewn in front of in front of a bride as she walks down the aisle. It's gonna fall for you, fall perfectly in place. Um, it's not a bad thing for petals to fall in front of your face. No, as a matter of fact, just because the 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 standard way to say this is who, what, where, why, and when. We could we could say why, who, where, what, when. We could change that. There's no rule that says you can't, you have to talk about the who first. Because every single one of these steps has to have, has to be shown and not told. So it's not, it's not a bad thing to start with your why. It's not a bad thing. For the why to be what pops out into your head as the main issue of your story. That's okay. That is okay. And the why might actually also be the who. Remember I said that the who doesn't have to be a person. It could be a thing. It could be a place. It could be a town. It could be an event. Why can The who can be many different things. So there's no reason why the who can't be your why. The who could be your why. And that is how you is what you need to think of as you're thinking about ways to express your why. You know, put some put some reality into your why. How would you put reality into a why? For example, why do I write? Why do I write? I write because it makes me have joy. I write 
that makes me alive. I write because it makes me feel from the tips of my fingers to the tips of my toes that the world is alive and vibrant and going someplace. That there is more to life than just sitting in this place. Where that's why I write. I, that's my why. Now, my, that's not necessarily my character's why. That's my personal why. That's why I write. I write because the stories are in my head and they've got to come out. They've got to come out. If they don't come out, I will never be able to sleep. Because as I've said before, the stories are what keep me up, up at night, uh, keep me, wake me up in the morning and keep me up at night. And my sister can, will tell you, my sister, who's also my roommate right now, she will tell me how many nights she's fallen to sleep to the sound of the keyboard because that's what, that's what I'm doing. And go to sleep until it's out of my head. Oops. Uh, sorry. My keyboard type, you know, what I, in the comments, what I, what I put. Sorry. Um, but your why, and sometimes the why, like in a recipe book, because that's a personal thing. Your why has to be your personal why. If you're writing a recipe book for people who love bacon and you don't particularly like bacon, then why is not your motivation? Why is not your main character? But if you're writing a recipe book about juices that you have developed, that have helped personally helped your health issues that have helped others help health issues that have made you feel better than that your why is your who for that recipe now that might not be your 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 who for everything but that's your who for now so show us why and part of that showing is going to be your photography a recipe book you can't have a recipe book you and I both know that, right? Um, so how are you going to show that that item, that that particular juice, so that it's appealing, so that it's um, enticing, so that people who are reading about your character, your who, want to taste that item. Um, you're going to have to think about that. I love photography. And I've realized, I realized that my love of photography flows into my love of writing because I tend to take pictures of scenic things. Um, scenic, scenic things that I, I like to write. I love taking pictures of bridges because I love the imagery of a bridge. And I almost in every story that I write, there's a bridge. Someone is walking over or under or around or a barrier or something like that because I love that image. And I take pictures of bridges. I have, I went through my photo album, uh, my digital photo album today, and I, I counted how many pictures of bridges I have taken in the last six months, 26. 26 pictures of bridges and I haven't left the house. Okay. So a lot of these pictures of bridges are off the television or out of books. Um, I've hardly left the house in a year because of, as we all know, uh, you know, we are all, there's health stuff going on. So it's okay if you don't have a win because sometimes your, your when is right now. When do you want to make this juice? Right now. You want to show your readers that you want to do this now. Uh, the story that I'm writing at this, at this moment is um, kind of a coming of age story for a young woman. And she, I don't put a year, there's no date on this story. But it's obviously, obviously a modern story because they all have cell phones. Um, but I don't show, I don't tell the story by saying it was the summer of 2009. No. I start the story with it's the summer she graduated from high school. 
And that will take most people to where, when they graduated from high school and some other issues that happen with the grad, I, I, the book actually starts with her going to prom, uh, because it needs to have a basis. I need to have a basis of describing who she is, wh why she feels the way she does about herself. So you have to show the story, every single aspect of the story. Now, I'm going to say again, if you're writing an essay and you're writing an essay about a particular book, I'm going to recommend that, that you consider the who, your professor, because there are some professors out there who do not want you to take an inch of individual poetic license with Shakespeare's words. And there are some, some professors out there who want you to say, who want you to extrapolate and say, you know, it's possible that Shakespeare was thinking this. No, I've had professors who, who I actually had a professor once who flunked me on an essay. And I went to him and I said, what? And he was like, where did you get all this stuff from? You know, Shakespeare didn't say that. And Shakespeare didn't say that. And Shakespeare didn't say that. I said, well, so you want me just to write down what Shakespeare said? That's not much of an essay. He goes, that's what I want you to write. That's what Shakespeare said. Okay, so that's what I did. So you cut to, first of all, know your audience. Know your audience. Who are you writing for? So if you're writing an essay, be sure that you know who you're writing your essay for. Um, if your essay is a review on a book, is it, do they want five paragraphs or do they want 40 pages? Know who you're writing it for. If you're writing a novel, if you're going to write a book, who do you think the first person is that you have to write it for? Think about that. Who is the first person that you have to write that novel for? You have to write it for yourself. Because if you don't enjoy it, why in the world was, is anybody else going to enjoy it? Okay. I mentioned for just a second theatricality. That's part of showing. Part of showing a story. Yeah, that's right. Yourself. Write the story. I mentioned theatricality. And I'm going to tell you that in the course of my educational career, I took four different theater classes. And I didn't take them because I wanted to be in the theater. I've never wanted to be an actor or an actress. Never wanted to do anything like that. But I took them because I wanted to understand why, how to show things, how to write something so that you would show it rather than tell it. And for example, um, this, this kid who's walking up to this front porch, okay, in my front porch. Walking up to this porch at Grandma's house. I have train tracks and all kinds of stuff in here. I need to pop it over. Okay. Oops, I have. See, I have all sorts of places that I draw that where where things are and where they aren't. Um, just not, not that they'll ever end up in the story, but just so I, okay, I have to make the lead on this. Theatricality, okay. The kid who's walking up to that front porch. Let's imagine that you're that kid and you're walking up to that front porch and Granny is inside that house and she's going to be mad. And you know. How much more power is Granny to have if that kid reaches that the front of that house and, he's, and there are four steps going up to the front door and every step is a burden, is like, is like pulling his legs out of, out of, um, 
quicksand, you know, pulling his legs out of quicksand. And when he finally gets to the second step from the top, he can finally reach the doorbell. And so he reaches and he reaches and he touches the doorbell and Granny comes to the door. And what do we have here? We have Granny here looking down at Boy. Okay? So you have Boy looking up into the stern eye of his granny. Were they stern or were they faithful? But who has the power in this situation? Who has the power? The power seen is always coming from above. Who has the power? So as the book progresses, we might have scenes with granny and the boy where they start meeting on level ground. And towards the end of the book, we might even have scenes where the boy and granny, maybe the granny is laying in a hospital bed and the boy is looking down over her. Who has the power? And I'm not saying power bad. I'm not saying bad power. I'm not saying evil power. I'm just saying who is the person who is the PowerPoint in that, in that scene? It is the person who is looking down on the other. Or in the case where they're where they're looking straight at each other, they're equal. They're equal. What about lighting? Time of day. When you're writing your story in Cincinnati, there's a little red house on a tree lined street, and at the end of the street there's a bus stop. And Mary waits at that bus drop every morning at 6.05. Is it fully light yet when Mary's waiting for that bus? Not at 6.05. It's not, it's not fully light. So um, what we have to do is we have to think about the external effects of the world on our story. Okay? That's what theatricality is about. Theatricality is about thinking about the lighting. Even though you're writing the story, you're not, you're not making a movie or a film. You have to think about, even though you may never say that the sun is barely up at six o'clock in the morning. You may never say that. But the reader will know that, that at 6.05, because if not, why does it matter that the bus is at 6.05? If, 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 the, if the brightness of the day doesn't make any difference, why does it matter that the bus is at 6.05? Because that's the light we want to see Mary in. That she's in this subdued light of early, early morning. What does that bring to mind? What does that make you think about Mary? What thoughts come to your head as the reader? Is your thought, is the thought that comes to your head that she's scared to death, she's going to lose her job, so she goes to work two hours early? Is the thought that comes to your head that she's a dedicated employee, so she makes sure she's on the bus way early to get to her job in plenty of time? Is the thought that comes to your head that she wants out of that house? That little red house so bad that she's willing to go to work two hours early just to get out of it. Show me. Don't tell me. Show me as the story progresses answers to that question. Why is she at the bus stop at 605? Is it because that's the only bus she can catch that will get her where she needs to be? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. You have to show me. But don't tell me. Show me through the course of your story. You don't have to, you don't answer the question of who, where, what, why, and when just once. And you may have in every, in every, your, your book may be divided into sections. You may have a section one, section two, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. And in every chapter, you might have a different who. You might have a different who, who is the main character of that chapter, who will then fall into place with the other who's from the other chapters. You can't just write a bunch of who's and not write any where, what's, why's, and when's, though. Because if you do that, you're writing characters for somebody else. That's not, your, that's not your, that's not what you want to do. Okay? 
Now, Miracle, I'm going to give you another assignment before anybody slips away here. Because the words that I want you to think about, Miss Lucy, that teacher, and I want you to think about those 13 students, those 13 crazy kids in that class. I want you to define each of those 13 characters. You don't have to define them as completely as Miss Lucy. You don't have to know their entire backstory, who their mother was, their father was, if they have any kids. Well, they better not have kids if they're that young. Um, you don't have to write their entire backstory. Um, um, but I, what I want you to think about is all 13 of those kids, I want you to write a little blurb about who each of them is. Are they the smart one? Are they the dumb one? Are they the class clown? Are they the class? Uh, are they the 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 class snitch? You know who are they? Write for me something about each of those thirteen kids as they relate to themselves, not as they relate to each other. Just who they are in that classroom environment. Who they are. We don't have to know about their parents. Now, maybe later on, that's going to come into play. I don't know the story. You have to tell me the story. But you and I will work on that. That's your assignment for this week going forward. Uh, Ms. Electra has pointed out that a lot of kids going into college today, leaving high school, and going into college today struggle with the, with the essay portion on, on the TSI, the, the, the testing section, to see where you fit in college. Um, here's the deal. That's why I want you to know five paragraphs. The TSI is initially graded by a computer. If you don't have five paragraphs, they're automatically going to count points off. What's in those five paragraphs? It took me a long time to figure out. Um, I'm going to do an entire session on writing an essay or a computer test. Okay, let me let me let me not even go into that now. We're gonna. I'm gonna do a session, and it might not be next week, but I'm gonna do a session about writing an essay, an essay for a computerized test. Okay, and I'll let you know when I'm gonna do that. Okay, um, let's talk about any questions that anybody has that they haven't brought up in the last few minutes that we have. Anything? Okay. So I'm going to do just a little recap here. Um, showing versus telling. Think about it. When you watch it, something on television, usually they're telling you the story. Not always. Um, by next time, do you want me to have do you want me to have the um, essays, uh, the the breakdown for essays for uh, computerized tests for our next session? Would that be helpful? If that will be helpful, I will do that for the, our next session. If not, we're going to move on to, to something else. Um, but just let me know if you want me to do essays for computerized tests or or essays for a class, not even necessarily an essay um, for for a computerized test, but an essay for a professor, an essay for a class. And I will have to confess that I'm going to use my essays as examples for this because I've saved quite a bit of them. I'll explain all that to you when I do the essay that, that why I saved a bunch of essays about a particular but would that be helpful? Let me know if that would be helpful to do um, how to write an essay for a computerized test um, for our next set. Moretta, uh, for you, I'm going to ask you to think about each of your recipes as a particular as a particular who. Each of your recipes in that book is its own individual who. In the case of a recipe book, your who's do stand alone, but they also stand together. So think about each of them individually 
as a why and the why being the who. Multiple who's. And that's okay. All multiple who's that fall into a greater, remember our circle that we had last week with all the little circles inside of it? Yeah. There's so many parts. So many parts to getting everything to meld together. And you know what? You don't always get it all right. I'm going to tell you that I have an editor. I have someone. Um, are we? You bet we are, Miracle. What do you think I'm, 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 I'm pressing you for, honey? You bet we're going to write a real book. Uh-huh. The two types of stories again. Um, the, four, the four types of stories. The... I want to tell you exactly how I told you before. And yes, I do have all of these written down. They're the four types of. Uh, I want you to write about the 13 kids for next week. For next week, I want you to have. And, and actually, I'm going to talk to your mom about you and I having some private sessions. So once you get those 13 kids written next week, then we're going to set up some time. Okay. Uh, but yes, but the, the types of stories for, to answer Electra's question before were fiction, self-help, inspirational, and motivational. So fiction, and there are lots of different kinds of fiction. There are lots of different kinds of self-help, lots of different kinds of inspiration, and lots of different kinds of motivational. Um, I write, I write murder mysteries, but I'm going to also tell you, that I write PG rating murder mysteries. I don't like, I don't, I don't want to write something that I would not want anyone to be able to walk in a room and be able to read or maybe oppressed a little bit far for some people, um, but not beyond them. I, I don't write um, too much blood and gut. A lot of TV relies on blood and gut and gore. And that's how you tell the story. I want you to show you the story. And you don't need to write the blood and gut and gore or all that kind of stuff necessarily to show the story. Um, showing versus telling a story. Yeah. And and in that also falls that in showing, I want you to keep in mind the theatricality of the story. Remember that, that there are issues outside there are elements outside of your character that you want to take into effect uh is it a small town is there a lot of traffic? is there a little bit of traffic is there just one main bus line but there are a lot of bus lines are you taking the bus from a small town into a big metropolis what are you know that's the theatricality that's the theatricality. this is these are elements of writing a story. I am so sorry that our hour is is up. But Miracle, I want you to write those 13 kids. We're going to talk about it a little bit next week. And then you and I are going to have a session, okay? Anybody else? Any questions before we get off? I don't see any. So feel free to put your questions in the comments afterward. Next week, maybe I'll bring you um, some examples of some things that I've written, some poetry and maybe a couple of my books, you know, whatever. Show you some examples from my work. But so next Tuesday, same place, 7 p.m. Thank you all for paying attention. Thank you all. I hope that I've been able to teach you something and I hope that we can continue together. I'm really, really enjoying these workshops and I hope you are too. Thanks for coming.